Howdy folks, I'm Michael. What's up guys, I'm Race. All right, so uh, today is the last in the series of Own the Week. Yeah, so we've seen Cam already. We've seen Rancho. And of course, now we're on the Superior Schools. Mm -hmm. We got Ace Charter. Uh, we got Rio. And River Oaks Charter. Yeah, uh, all in all, should be fun. Yeah, so um, enjoy this worship guys. See you later.
So 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
something about the soil that is unlocking the seed. See, many of us have been saying, God, get me out of this soil. I know it's not your way, but it is my way. And my way is always perfect. Yes, Jesus had to die so that I could live. What is David without Goliath? Just a shepherd boy that never becomes king. What is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego without the idol that they had to bow to? What are they without the fire? Just three boys that we would have never heard about. What is Rahab without the wall? What is Joshua without an army? Look, what, what are you? Look, what is Daniel without the lion's den? Just a guy we didn't know prayed in his room. Maybe the stuff coming against you was not sent to kill you. Maybe it was sent to reveal the seed that's inside of you. I came to tell you today, you this is just the foundation of what he's trying to do. Hey Roots, welcome to the third week of our Own the Wheat series. We are so happy to have you join us today. For the past three weeks, different high schools have taken over for the week and today we end the series. This three week series has been about the Sermon of the Mount, which is one of Jesus' longest and most popular sermons where he talks about many important topics in the chapters of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. In the first week, Cam High talked about the Beatitudes, which are attitudes that bring heavenly blessings. The second week, Rancho High talked about laying up treasures in heaven by putting God first. And finally, the third week, Ace, Rio Mesa, and other charter schools will be talking about building our house on the rock. So before we get started, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful day. Thank you for everyone that's listening right now and for those who aren't, Lord. I just pray that you will contain, um, that you will bless all of them, Lord, and that you will just continue to guide them towards you and towards your word. And I just pray that today as I give this message that it won't be my words, but it will be yours, Lord, and that you will impact so many people, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for all that you do in everyone's lives, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have you ever built anything? If you have, you realize that it all has a starting point. It all has a foundation. For example, in my construction class at ACE, our junior project was to build training modules. There are one wall that our group built to practice plumbing, electrical, and tiling and other trades. First, we pour the concrete and then we put up the studs, the piping, the electrical, etc. But the foundation was the concrete and everything we built was on that, was based on that. In fact, during our project, we screwed up. Our job was to pour the concrete while in the middle, it had a black pipe. In the wall, studs are the skeleton of the wall and give it support, and studs are supposed to be 16 feet, on, 16 feet apart. But our pipe was in the way, so we had to fix our plans and change the way we were going to put our studs. And if you haven't laid a foundation like that, then there's been other parts in your life where you've probably had to lay foundations. For example, in Legos, or in generally building anything, you start on the bottom or the inside so the rest of the structure doesn't fall off. Or when making a school presentation, your foundation is usually the information and that's what guides your graphics, your colors, your pictures, and your style. And just like that, there are so many areas in our lives when we have to start with the foundation first so that we can build on top of that. And this is what Jesus is talking about in Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But, every, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. In those times, people lived in stone houses or mud brick houses. The poor people had a dirt for a floor, while the middle class had pebbles or baked clay, baked clay while the rich had a wooden floor. So in regards to a house, they knew what would keep their house up. And today we see that too. When it comes to a strong foundation, we know that rock is stronger than sand. And it's the same way in our lives. 
we are that house. And when troubles come, whether they're COVID-19, a divorce, a breakup, a loss, or anything that causes hurt, do we fall or do we stand strong? Do we stop trusting God and go our own way? Or do we have faith to say, I trust you? That depends on our foundation. The wise men saw that only a strong foundation would hold his house up. The foolish man didn't care. Maybe he just really liked the beach, but in the end, his house fell. And so what is our foundation? Is it people? Is it social media? Is it roots? Is it personal success? Is it actions? Is it Jesus? Whatever you choose your foundation to be, it can't be consistently solid unless you set your foundation on Jesus. We tend to have so many foundations, but there's only one rock and the rest is sand. We know our foundation by recognizing what drives us, what holds us up. And if it's people, has social distancing affected you so much that you stopped seeking Jesus? If you couldn't go to your youth service anymore, would that stop you from seeking him? What drives your relationship with him? In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, we see a group of people who were in the end times, who were confused and weren't founded on Christ. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Now here is where we see where the people put their foundation, where they put their trust. They put it in their actions and their success, but not in Christ. And whether he is or isn't our foundation, we all have one. We all have something that drives our action. So how do we know if our foundation is in Christ? It's easy to say that he is, but reflect on where your joy and drives come from. When troubles come, that's when we know where our foundations lie. In the story, both houses had a foundation, but when the storm hit, only one of them stood strong. I thought a lot about this when the social distancing began. I started to focus a lot on my feelings and my actions. I felt confused and a bit lost. Like I was falling falling away from Christ because I did nothing. When we were told we were leaving school, I realized I had so much more time to do the things I dreamed about, like reading my Bible every morning, taking lots of notes, studying hard topics, worshiping, and I don't know what else. But instead, I was watching Netflix, YouTube, overeating, or just generally being lazy. And that made me feel like I wasn't having a good relationship with Jesus. I felt like I wasn't rooted in Christ. And so I began to question my faith and my foundation. And when I read my Bible, I saw other people who questioned God through their own hard times. In Psalms, we see a musician, Asaph. He wrote several psalms, and in his time, he saw the wicked, the enemies of Israel, get everything they wanted. They lived lives of pleasure, and they seemed happy. In Psalm 73, 13 to 14, we see him ask God, almost complaining, Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. He asked if following God was worth it because it didn't feel worth it. He could only see his own suffering while those who didn't follow God were happy and had it all. But then he says in verse 17, Till I enter the sanctuary of God, then I understood the final destiny. He came to God, he prayed, and entered God's presence. And then here comes the interesting part. In verse 21 to 25, he says, Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. Yet, I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. I was so foolish and ignorant. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. He realized that it was his circumstances that left him feeling bitter. He felt foolish because the answer was right there, being with God. And even though he doubted, God was still there. And he realized that when he put his faith in God. He said, you guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. God guides us with his word and he leads us with his spirit. 
and he leads us to his purpose. Whereas the people of the world seem to have everything, the dream house, the pool, whatever they wanted, but in the end, their house was going to fall and they would have nothing. And then Asaph says, whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. And everything else will fail, but it's God who is everlasting, never changing and ever loving. And he is the one who we should desire and want. Doubt will creep in and the house will shake, but in the end, it's God's presence where we find peace, purpose, and love. He is the foundation that will hold us up. And it's okay to ask questions, and it's even okay to doubt, but let them make your faith stronger because God will show himself faithful in the end. Have faith to say, Lord, I trust you, and go to his presence and see that you are his and he is yours. And when He is our strong foundation, we can stand strong in Him no matter what comes next. Something I've learned recently is that one way we know God is part of our lives is when He's interfering with our lives, when He's making a change and challenging us, when we're giving something up for Him. It's not a go to church on Sunday and then let me live my life the way I want to. He has to be the center of our decisions, the one we go to before we do anything, the one in the center and foundation of our lives. It's not one foot in, one foot out, it's two feet in. It's good to come to church, life groups, and build relationships, but don't let church be the only moment when you're with God. He isn't just at church, He's everywhere. Another thing is that it's easy to grow numb to God. When we've read the Bible so much, or gone to church so much, sometimes it can lose its meaning, its impact. And when that happens, we need to revisit our foundation. So how do we make God our foundation? First, self-reflect. 2 Corinthians 13.5 says, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. See where your foundation is and how you're reacting to the storms in your life. Second, Read the Bible. Romans 10, 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Our faith comes from hearing God's word. The Bible is powerful and life-changing. 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. We need to read His Word if we want our faith to be placed in Him because it's God's words written to us. It's His beautiful Word. Third, pray for guidance and wisdom. James 1.5 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. We are not alone in our, Christ, in our walk with Christ. Ask for wisdom, clarity, and guidance to make Jesus your foundation. And finally, build spiritual relationships, not just to hand out, but to grow in faith together. Romans 1.12 says, That is that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. This is like how we do in our life groups. And if you're not a part of a life group, I encourage you to come and join. To end, our rock is Jesus, and He is the only foundation that won't fail, won't move, and won't change. Whether we come to, when we come to Him, whether it's by reading your Bible, praying, or worshiping, we can stand strong in Him and not fall. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for this day, Lord. Thank you that um, I, I, I know you've impacted someone who's heard this message, Lord, and I just pray that you will just continue to impact everyone, Lord, and that right, if we don't have you as our foundation, Lord, that we will may, that you will become our foundation, Lord, and that we will just continue to trust in you, Lord, and stand strong in you, and not let you anything else, Lord, because you're the only one who's going to stand strong, and you're the only one who will just continue being there, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, Heavenly Father, that you will bless everyone who is listening, and those who aren't listening, and those who aren't speaking, Lord, who aren't um, watching, Lord, that you will just continue to guide them, Lord, and you will just lead them to you, lead all of us to you, so that in the end, Lord, Heavenly Father, we will just be able to experience your love, your wonderful love, and your wonderful 
presence, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. And I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this week. Next week, we're starting a series called I Have Questions. And I hope you guys join again for that. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye. Hey, guys. Us again. All right. We hope you guys enjoyed that service. And uh, next week, we're starting a new series called um, I Have Questions. What's up? I Have Questions. What? What are you doing? The series is called I Have Questions. Oh, that's what it is. The new series is called I Have Questions. Be sure to tune in next week for that. Yep. Well, overall, we hope you guys enjoyed the service, and we hope to see you at our next service. Take care. Bye-bye.